Hello and welcome to another episode in the Godot Basics tutorial series. In this episode, we will be taking a look at changing scenes. Now, why exactly do you need to change scenes? Well, in most games, you will generally deal with having more than one scene. Let's take a quick look at a basic setup you would have for a game. Generally, when you start a game, you're going to have a splash screen, which leads into a main menu. For main menu, you'll have choices. You can either have a game or you can have credits, perhaps an about me section. Most of the time when your player or user finishes or beats the game, it generally leads to the credit scene as well. And so typically in a game, you'll have this kind of format where you have splash screen, main menu, and then game. And on top of that, you may have other things you want to show your users as well. Now, how exactly do we go from changing from one portion of our game into another? Well, each game engine will provide you with a way of handling that. However, Godot offers you three ways. The first way, and the way I'm going to show you in this episode, is deleting existing scenes through Godot's built-in swapping functionality. Now, Godot also offers two other ways, hiding a scene and removing a scene while also keeping a reference to the scene through variables. I will not go over that in this episode because we went over them in previous episodes. For example, in a previous episode, we went over hiding a scene. We know that canvas item provides the method called hide, which hides everything in the scene from the visibility or rather from the viewport that the user is shown. We can also remove a scene while also keeping a reference to the scene through variables. This is called object polling. And basically you're letting a top level node handle its children by adding and removing them and keeping references to them in memory. And we also went over this in a previous episode as well. One thing to keep in mind is that when you use Godot's built-in scene swapping functionality, you're going to delete every node on the scene. So that means that we don't have to worry about our scene having orphan nodes because Godot will handle deleting everything in the scene tree for us. Godot offers two way of changing scenes and it will be through the scene tree. The first way is through the change scene method and the second way is through the change scene to method. Again, both of these will delete the current scene immediately when called. Now we talked about the scene tree global class quite a while back in these series. So as a refresher, the scene tree manages the hierarchy of nodes in a scene. To get the current scene tree, we use the global get tree method. Let's talk about the change scene method. To use the change scene method, we need to use the get tree method. The get tree method provides us with the change scene method and it takes in a string value that happens to be the path to your scene. So towards the bottom, we can see an example. We have a variable named scene2. It happens to be a string data type and we assign it a string value with the representation of getting to our scene file, which happens to be named scene2. Now, once we have this value, this string file path value onto the variable scene2, we will then call getTree method followed by the change scene method and we will pass in the scene2 variable, which again is a string value, which represents the file path to our scene file. And this is one way of changing scenes. The second way to change scene is through the change scene to method. The difference between this method and the previous method called change scene method is that the previous method used a string value, whereas the change scene to method takes in a packed scene data type. So towards the bottom, you can see we have a variable named scene two again, but this time instead of passing it a string value, we use the preload method and we pass it in a string method with the representation of the file path. We can also use the load method as well. No matter what, what we really want to do is we want to get a packed scene data type and using the preload and load method on a string file path will in fact get us the packed scene data type. Now, once we've assigned a pack scene data type to our variable named scene2, we're going to go ahead and use the getTree method followed by the change scene2 method, and we're going to pass in an argument that is of the data type packed scene. And actually, it's very simple to change scenes in Godot. Now, benefits of using Godot's built in change scene functionality is that we don't have to worry about memory management when deleting scenes because Godot under the hood will handle deleting children nodes in the scene tree for us. 
One last thing is that the change scene and the change scene two methods will both return an error enum value. I'm going to go ahead and leave a link down below in the description so you can see the full list of enum values for errors. However, all you really need to know are two values. The first enum value is called OK and it returns the integer value zero. So if your change scene or change scene two method returns zero, then that means that changing scene was a success. However, if any of these methods returns a value that is greater than zero, then an error or issue has occurred. And from that integer value, you can take a look again at the description link down below to see what type of error happened. And the type of error will be based on the integer value that the change scene or change scene to method returned back. I'm going to upload to GitHub a project file with the two different methods we went over in this episode, the change scene method and the change scene two method. So please feel free to download that, see what's happening and play around with the code. Well, that's all I have for you in this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for clicking the like button and thank you for clicking the subscribe button. In the description section down below, I have a Trello page with other YouTube channels that deal with Godot. So please feel free to take a look at that. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have an amazing day.